everyone. Uh, my name is Kim Knoppers. I'm a curator at FOAM and I would like to welcome you here at the premiere presentations. Uh, these are short presentations um, uh, with artists who present uh, new work here at uh, Unseen. And I warmly welcome the artist, um, Merdat uh, Narachi. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name uh, not good. Um, and uh, Polly Tuttle, uh, very warm welcome to you. And um, we will start with you. Um, we have very short time, so we have to be fast and to the point. Um, you are born 1978, based in uh, Tehran. And um, your work from the series Japanese Garden is presented at Ag Gallery from Tehran. And um, I was curious because I read that you studied uh, metallurgy engineering uh, at Sharif University. And what is that? Because I didn't know. What is metallurgy, metallurgy engineering? Yeah, first, thank you for the time. <laughs> uh, metallurgy is, is, is my, was my major in the university, is, is engineering about the metals, mm -hmm. all the things you do on the metals, but it doesn't really depend on, uh, related to my photography or no. my art. Yeah. No, but why did, why did you decide to um, uh, go in the direction of photography and art after you finished your uh, engineering mm. studies? What Actually, did, how did you the decide? The, the former was, was, it was an error for me <laughs> when, I, when I decided to choose the major because it, it, it's a very long discussion if I, if I wanted to open it because in Iran there in the school, you you couldn't have different experience in art or sports or many things. Many people push you to become engineer or medicine. Mm -hmm. So people at the age of 18, they wanted to go to university. So it's I, I think it's normal that you choose the wrong major. Mm -hmm. But after that, I found out that in the university, I started to ex experiment different things like calligraphy or playing music and then photography and the photography still remains. Okay, place. so yeah. you started with photography during your yeah, university yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, university. Ah, okay. And um, um, the, the work that you show here, uh, it's called Japanese Garden. There is one big uh, piece in the, in the booth at uh, Ark Gallery. Um, uh, it's about, now the title says, uh, Japanese gardens. And I read in uh, the Unseen magazine um, that you found a similar spirit in Japan uh, that you also uh, find in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. What is this spirit and how do you relate to that? Um, actually, it's kind of uh, during my travels to Europe and seeing the works of Western art or contemporary art, I feel uh, I don't feel very close to it, and I think it's it's more rational than I, I, the sense I have about the art. So I come, I search a lot, a lot in the Asia, and still I keep searching to find what what's uh, us as the people who live in the East look at the art because now many. Eastern artists actually they influenced by the Western artists or curators and they changed the way the natural way of looking at art in, in this area so I become interested to, to know more about the Asia and I, I found out that the things that I believed at the first place is it's common in the in this just like you you believe in some moment in art just like in Japanese, they said miao. It's a, some spiritual rhythm, rhythm mm -hmm. in art. That when you have creativity, everything is not very rational. Mm -hmm. There's some moment when you can't describe it very well. What happened, and it ends to the work of art. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this kind of looking at art, not very logical, is kind of characteristic of the East. Mm -hmm. And um, we see here a photo, uh, one of your photographs. Uh, actually, I don't see it, but you do. Um, uh, and um, it's from your series, Japanese uh, uh, Gardens. And I think this whole series, uh, when you look at the next one and this one as well, 
um, is uh, about darkness mm -hmm. uh, and also about um, uh, invisibility and visibility in a, in a way. Um, can you tell a little bit about that? Because I have the feeling that all of your work, also your previous series, yeah. are much yeah. about invisibility. And yeah. why do you choose photography then? Because that's quite <laughs> difficult. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's three <laughs> questions. Yeah, <laughs> <But> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have to speed yeah. up, so maybe that's the reason. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my work, before I went to Japan and worked on, on this series, was dark. I, mm -hmm. Sometimes I think about it, why it's so dark. I related it to some maybe situation in Iran because it's not very hopeful sometimes, mm -hmm. many times actually. And my, I, I worked on a series, it's kind of landscapes uh, in 2012 named Fairland. And on the statement I wrote that it's kind of, we wait for a magic to happen in this time mm -hmm. or we will sleep there and eternal sleep. So it's, the darkness was kind of characteristic of my works. And when I went to Japan, I found out that the darkness is very praised in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it's, they, it's, they valued a lot, the, the darkness. And they have this, some uh, term yogen about darkness that is deep and dark and mysterious. And so and uh, I wrote, I r read uh, Tanizaki book in praise of shadows and it, it tells me a lot about how Japanese look at darkness and praise it because they also put some of their valuable paintings in the darkest part of the room mm -hmm. so it's not very visible to the viewer so and uh, talking about painting mm -hmm. um, do you only uh, do you only take photographs or do you also paint? Because your uh, photographs are quite mm -hmm. painterly and I think I also read uh, about you that yeah. you really like uh, yeah, yeah, painting. Really, do you yeah, yeah. act yeah, also yeah, as yeah. a painter? Actually, I, I followed painting more than photography. Really? And mm -hmm. uh, I started painting actually. <laughs> but uh, it's a question I, I had with myself many times that if you like very much a painting why you started photography or you continue it at, at least mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I came to this answer that fo in photography there's something that is very important for me because when you took you, you couldn't <coughs> took photos of something totally imaginary mm -hmm. so when you took some took picture of something it is outside and when you mix it with some manipulation or something into something imaginary it I like this play with the viewer because they they know that this kind of landscape or something it it, it is outside, but mm -hmm. it's not just like this photo. So I like this this play mm -hmm. because it's part of part of it is reality because it's photography and part of it is fiction that I like it very much. And is this Japanese Garden series? Is it finished now, or are you? Uh, uh, for the working? time, yes, it's finished. If I got some sponsor or because it, it was part mm -hmm. of the grant I got from the Musée du Cap only in Paris. Ah, okay. So if I can get another grant or something, maybe I continue it in Japan, especially I really like it to show it in Japan. Yeah, okay, so, right. yeah mm -hmm. I can finish. And um, what is, are you working on a new project then already on a new series or is this now? Um, I, 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 I started some projects, yeah. But you don't want to tell us about it. Uh, it's not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, no, no, it's not something very secretly, but it's, I, I haven't actually decided which one is okay. my main concern. Okay. Now, now we will see. Yeah. Thank course. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Polly, um, hello. Nice that you are here. Thank you. And, um, tell us a little bit about your uh, Work. You are represented by uh, South Kiosk, born in 1978, same age, um, and um, uh, where Merdat uh, is traveling to Japan, to another country, um, is you stay in your own, in your home country, in yeah. um, United Kingdom, Great Britain, um, and you search actually for the exotic in the everyday uh, life. Mm. Um, oh, I, of course, I need to show your photographs. Like, just have a quick overview. Yeah, 
I was uh, wondering uh, why you are so interested in the, uh, the, the everyday life, because it can be quite boring, no? That was the challenge, I think, the main challenge, to kind of really force myself to look, look in the everyday places and to travel around my home um, to, I think, find the overlooked um, areas of the country, perhaps. It's really easy. I'm, I live in London. I think it's really easy as a Londoner to, to stay in the London bubble, to only visit the nice places you know, in the countryside or go back to your hometown. Um, I think it's, for me, I just wanted to really discover all the corners of my country to kind of get a real sense of what the place is. For me, you know, even more, it's kind of beyond even photographing it. It's to kind of go there to just see and experience, I think. Um, and I have I've been really in influenced by the topic, topographic, or the new topographic photographers of America and Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I was looking at the landscape with that influence in mind, uh, and then the photographs came about after the exploration of these ordinary places. And what is your working? Uh, what is your working method? Do you are you uh, sitting behind the computer and search for these places? Uh, do you use Google Maps, or are you just driving around? What is your? Um, it, what is it, the way you work? It is a combination of those things and looking at a physical map. You know, like. I used to, um, I've, I've been photographing for, uh, I'd say about 10 years, it's probably more than that, oh, I just stick to 10, um, but at one, I, I wasn't professionally, I wasn't a professional photographer making money or really exhibiting until about four years ago. Um, so for four years in my life, I was actually a location scout for film commercials. Mm. Um, the, the photos weren't anything to do with that, but I think that gave me a confidence to sort of be in the landscape and travel. Um, and then I would use a physical map for that. And I love maps to kind of see what the terrain is like, to kind of like discover the coastal areas. So I would look re literally at the shapes and the kind of the terrain on maps um, and think, okay, that looks intriguing. Go and explore there. So it's not really, yeah, it's not really Google Maps, but and maybe it is actually nowadays. But so it's a progression of things. Sometimes it will be literally getting in my car and driving lonely, long journeys around the countryside. Sometimes at night or early morning. So I'm always looking for another element. Yeah, and also I think the, yeah, the atmosphere light. and the light plays a very important role in yeah. your uh, work. Yeah. Do, you prefer, do you prefer to um, uh, take your photographs in harsh light but, and also in the um, uh, twilight? Yeah, because it's not really a preference, but it's just uh, it's giving the, the landscapes another element to try and, as you said at the beginning, exoticize. Um, Sorry. mundane or give it an uneasy feeling. So I'm a lot of the time looking at um, suburbia um, and trying to like, trying to kind of interpret in a photograph the way it makes me feel. That, that mm -hmm. kind of yeah sense of entrapment maybe um, and so through light and the time of day I'm Drawing something else in in the image, if that makes sense. And um, um, you you was uh, referring in a text that I uh, read to uh, uh, an index of uh, mm. the everyday. So do you consider this as a lifelong project? <laughs> Because no, no, an no, index, no. that's a huge... Yeah, uh, it thing. is. I mean, in an index, I, I, I'm kind of probably at some point would want to put it in a book because I don't think it can be open-ended. Who wants it to see like so many of these images going on and on and on? And I don't think it's probably healthy to say it's a lifelong project. So it may be to contextualise it, put it in a book, and it could be called an index because I wanted to have a list of 
all of these places. So houses, suburbia, you know, city view, roads, street furniture, supermarkets, motorways, you know, all of those things. And that's what I think I mean saying a picture index. Mm -hmm. I kind of have all of those elements. Picture in the in index of Britain. So. And are you, are you uh, because we, we're talking about uh, an index, are you mainly focused on this now? Or are you, do you also have maybe some little side projects? Um, well, I've started photographing in different countries. Well, Sorry, you're sorry. I, I, I started photographing in Greece. Ah. So at the beginning of this year, because I kind of wanted to get out of comfortable place maybe to see what it would be like how my how my photography would develop if it, if it has developed or you know, how, how it would feel to be somewhere else so I, I've started in Greece so I took I, I went there for a week at the beginning of the year or 10 days and I went to Thessaloniki in the north I stayed there and then drove on my own all the way down to Athens and spent another four days there photographing I have, I have probably about six, six successful images. But you are so searching for the everyday in Athens then? Or um, is it a bit more exotic? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> it's the very beginning, it's probably hard to say exactly yeah, what it's about. But in Athens especially, it's probably looking at the kind of state of the city. So it's, uh, some views looking in. Um, yeah, quite a few views looking in and then um, focusing on particular architecture and again it's um, doing the same thing using colour, geometry and light to kind of evoke something a yeah, different feeling. Okay, thank you very much and um, good you. luck in Greece with your project thank and you also much. in Great Britain of course with, with the index. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Uh, and I would like to invite the next two artists. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sana. <laughs> yes. Love ones. Um, welcome to Laurence Agater and Sana Canisto. Uh, Laurence, I would like to start with, uh, with you. Um, originally from France, but now for uh, quite some time living in Amsterdam, uh, in a very nice house uh, at the, near the canal. Um, your work is uh, presented by uh, Sea Level uh, Gallery, and it's called uh, Cathedral Hermetique uh, Vitro. And um, before talking about this series, um, you could maybe tell a little bit about the cathedral series as a whole, because this is part of, uh, part of a whole series. And, but first I would like to... <coughs> maybe you make a little overview and then, then we go yeah. back on Maybe you can help me with it, because it's not really uh, working. Maybe a, a, an overview of the images now and then back to the, the first one, please. Um, uh, so maybe you could tell a little yeah. bit about how the cathedral series started. Yes, so it's, uh, thank you for mm -hmm. inviting me. Uh, it started in a very classical way, and actually I think it's a very classical work all along. It started in just in my studio. I was um, playing around with the idea to work on a poster from a painting from the cathedral of Rouen from Claude Monet. And so, and then I thought, oh yeah, a friend gave me a book a few years ago called Cathedrals and uh, Église de France. And that, now is the right moment to take it out of my library and put it on the table, just as a side thing to you know, trigger yourself or relax or what. 
And so I had it open on my table and a very simple thing happened, very, very daily thing happened, very banal, but that struck me very deep. Actually, it was just the sun passing behind the window and but the, the sun passing behind the window frame, then of course the window frame was slightly moving along the page on the top of a fantastic cathedral of Bourges, a facade of the cathedral of Bourges. It was the spread of the book. So it was a black and white photograph from the 50s. And I saw how um, very systematically, very calmly, very surely, the shadow swallowed the total cathedral. Very dramatic and very small. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that it gave me peace because uh, of the rhythm. And uh, yes, there was something very essential in it. And I thought it's a good idea to register it, register it, document that. So then I, I started on that process, and um, that was the first stage of, of this project. I made it a book because I love artist books. Uh, a book of, it's about, I think, 120, always the same images with only the shifting shadow over it. I think you can also, it's here at on scene uh, That's book right, fair. at the RVB. Indeed. So you can take a look at it yes. there. It's, uh, the book is a, a facsimile from the original book, which, uh, which I photographed. So it's the same size, but it's much thicker. And there are some, um, it's the same typography. And in the book, there is no text or explanation because I think it's just a very simple thing to catch. You just see it happening in front of you. And for the book, I also wanted a special edition. And then I thought, what can I add? Because just one image from the book, extra nicely printed and signed, moi. So what, what would be interesting? And then you started experimenting, I yes. guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I uh, called the, the printer and I asked him if he had an idea for how to get the process um, upside down, to inverse the process. So to go, instead of going from light to darkness, go from darkness to light. And he proposed, he said, well, uh, there is a very interesting ink which is reacting to the heat, so thermal reactive ink. And maybe you should have a look at that. And I, um, I so I, d I started to experiment with another image from the same original book, a cathedral, uh, an interior at that time, uh, Cathedral of Coutances, a very beautiful Gothic cathedral. And then I had it silk screen with this special black ink, which I also use in the project uh, now at the Sea Level Gallery. And that was really fantastic because I saw that, um, so then you have a total black image, but with a presence, with a, uh, you, you, yeah, different depths of black actually. Then you see there is something, but it has to get revealed. And as the sun passes over the image, it slowly but surely totally opens up. It's revealing itself, as in the doka, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then the doka is more in one go. And that would go really millimeter by millimeter with the sun. So the opposite thing as the book with the shadow. That sounds beautiful. And it is, I guess. And um, um, the work that you present uh, here at, mm -hmm. uh, at Unseen, I think you work with the same principle, yeah. uh, but you choose to um, use color uh, photography. Where did you find these and why color now? Because the project was first all black and white, and yeah. why did you make that decision? Um, I think it is, I got lifted from the process I saw in front of my eyes with the black and white images and I I was looking for I got maybe a bit of a junk on magic or something I was looking for more uh, of this feel of, of revelation and and then I, I thought of the color patterns you see from stained glass sometimes in cathedrals or church when the sun comes through and you see the patterns on the floor uh, crawling over the chairs and on the pillars. And I thought this is something always, it's also such a relief and it's, it's so, so very beautiful experience. So what will happen? Could I do this as well with color? Um, and then I, I started, uh, I started the process again with looking for color photographs. Then I, the Cathedral of Chartres is the most beautiful and 
ensemble for stained glass, the best preserved in France. So I went to Chartres and but actually I didn't, the photograph I'm using, I don't make myself. You always use, you, most of the time you use reproductions. Eh? Yes. That's really your Yeah, they are uh, better methods. than mine. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to be very, no, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, they are, um, I prefer to go in libraries for hours and order books and get surprised at home and unpack and endlessly turn pages. And then I think this is perfectly fitting to my feel. But I Compliment, uh, I make a complimentary research by myself, you know, and just simply with my iPhone, to be honest. But looking for the feel by my, uh, yeah, just by taking domestic, for instance, I took a lot of also domestic images in this cathedral, smaller things, smaller bits and pieces. But the work, the process has something very monumental, and I wanted very monumental images as well. And the size is quite large of the, the prints. Mm -hmm. And is your series finished now? How many images uh, does it consist of? There are five. So there are three of the cathedrals of Chartres, and, um, and two square ones, one from Segovia in Spain, with this uh, close-up on big color patterns on a pillar and one of the, the rosette from Notre Dame de Paris. And yeah, for now it feels, for now it feels kind of complete for me. Yeah. Okay. And I have one very practical uh, question. How, mm -hmm. does, how long does this ink last? Do you know? You don't I know. I don't know. You know. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it will last something like a lifetime because a friend of mine has a LP uh, record uh, cover and from the 80s and a bit of this technique because it's often used in commercial way but in very small dimension a, a piece of the LP uh, cover it's with this ink and it's still working so I think I mean, if you have it every day in the sunshine this is not a good idea mm -hmm. but if you dose it a little bit mm -hmm. and, and also you accept that the whole thing about the work it's about time, transformation uh, going to, you know, somehow it's about time and, and experience of time. So it, it's part of the deal that the photograph is not forever. Yeah. You're right. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Sana, uh, welcome. Nice that you're here. Um, um, you are known for exploring uh, issues concerning uh, the portrayal of nature and culture in artistic and scientific context. And in the past you traveled uh, a long way to South America and um, uh, to Central America. And, but now you for your new series, for your most recent series, you decided to stay uh, close at home uh, in Finland. Uh, can you tell a little bit about why you decided to uh, to stay close at home? Uh, yeah, I think the similarities anyway in these projects are that I am I am in the forests and in scientific stations and in the nature reserves. So I I work a lot in the nature, and I have uh, always carried with me this small studio. So I w work in a field with this small studio and with the equipment. And I think my idea is not to kind of make something natural looking, but uh, on the other hand, it's more kind of abstraction or it's artificial. It's with white background or in this white space. Uh, this uh, use of field studio is kind of working method for me. Mm -hmm. So I try to make something really arranged and like a still life or something really like a compositions there in this limited space. Mm -hmm. And but why Finland? Um, I used it was 15 years in the tropics. So, I don't know, I, I realized that now it's a good moment to, to work in Finland and maybe Europe. And I try to think about it as more as a wider project about the Nordic forests. And now just this 
spring I was uh, photographing in Russia in Lake Baikal. So one of these is um, Siberian ruby trout bird. It's from th this trip. Oh. Which one is it? Uh, the next one maybe. This Baikal? one. So mm -hmm. this was in Lake Baikal region. So now I'm thinking thinking about different kind of ornithological stations, perhaps in Italy or Spain or... Mm -hmm. And um, how do you do it? How do you take your photographs? Because sometimes I have the feeling that, uh, but maybe I'm wrong, uh, sometimes I have the feeling that uh, these animals are not real and sometimes I have the feeling that they are real. Um, and sometimes they're models uh, or stuffed, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, how do you? How do you? What is your working method? How do you work with living animals? Because that's quite intense, I guess. And yeah, th there is now <laughs> two kind of questions, <laughs> I think. But I'm really, I have looked a lot of this uh, history of scientific visualization and mm -hmm. kind of natural history drawings and and this kind of museum displays and uh, like paper mash models and and uh, this kind of material kind of inspires me so so it's it's the kind of uh, how would i say like the, the artificial and the really something, making something really quite arranged. Mm -hmm. And um, do you feel um, a photographer or also a researcher? Because I think you're, um, because your body of work is very consistent. Mm. Um, so I can imagine that it also has a more uh, yeah, research-based character. Um, yeah, I do, I do feel like s some sort of researcher and I, I compare myself a lot to the researchers and I would like that my work would be seen equally important than mm -hmm. the work that the scientists do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have struggled, for example, with permits because my work is something like completely different. Uh, how could I get a permit to work with, with in, in Costa Rica, for example, if I work with so many different species, how could I apply a permit for that? Mm -hmm. So I kind of all, all the time balance, balance there. And do you have a um, uh, photography or art background or um, uh, a biology or um, uh, a background in that? Or both, I have maybe? Only, I have only photography background, but I have always been in interested about like mm -hmm. how kind of science explains the world to us. And, and when I have been working together with the scientists in same locations, we always kind of share ideas and there is a lot of discussions and I often kind of collaborate with them to, to work with bats or birds or I couldn't do that on my own, but I need to work, work together with the, with the scientists. And um, I have a question about the way you present your uh, work. Is it usually in a, a, a big scale, a large format uh, a prints, or um, a, a, and are they usually hanging on the wall, or do you sometimes also present the photographs in another way, in exhibitions? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, mostly it's it's on the wall and it's framed and I have done also some video works and uh, some of these newer works they have two different sizes so there is one size smaller 
and one size bigger. For example, this Siberian ruby throat, there is another size that, that is 180, so it's, it's pretty large. And when it's so detailed, I, I mean, I have photographed that kind of in, in parts, all the branches in, in parts, so I get really good quality and, and really kind of a special depth of field. Because, because it's kind of sharp all the way, so it's almost like a drawing like. So. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to see the work again uh, in, the, in the stand at sea level and at metro, uh, metronome uh, gallery. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to invite the following uh, artists, um, uh, Maya Rocha and Danielle van Ark. So at uh, scene 15 gallery, uh, the colorful photographs of uh, Maya Rocha uh, from Switzerland are uh, presented. And um, your photographs are uh, very experimental and you use very strong uh, colors. And of course now we are showing them. <laughs> um, and um, also there are quite loud, uh, loud patterns. Um, could you tell a little bit about the physical way in which you create these uh, photographs? You mean the end product? Or yeah, yeah. not all the, oh, the process. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's always a bit the same story. First, I would take a, a photograph. Usually it's film photography, but sometimes it's also digital. This was in my garden. I didn't really plan it. I just liked the way this white banner was drying, but I felt it was a bit, I don't know, a bit empty or not enough happening to be really an interesting and strong image. So I, I uh, started playing around with it, like cutting it out and putting some, it's for kids, I don't know how it's called in English, but it's something that you, well, it's very colorful and you can really design it. And I liked the fact that it would invade the, um, the image, it's actually called invasion. And then it wasn't enough. It was a bit uh, there. There was uh, I missed a bit this um, I don't know organic structure. And so I put one layer more with cactus images. It's not really important what it is inside for me. It's more I like the density. I like that you have uh, one impression when you are far and you go close and you will see always more. So I, I want the experience of the, the image never to stop. You you are always gonna discover. A detail, and also for me, I like this image. I've done it. I don't know, three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I still like it. So, and you say uh, it's not really about what the image is. Uh, so it's more about form and experimenting uh, with form. Well, it's more about the feeling that the image will give, uh, and for that also I always change my recipe. It's not always the same um, structures or materials that I use. I like to change. So for that, it's not really relevant. It's more about yeah the, the end feeling of the image. Mm -hmm. And do you work in series or is it about a single image? It's, it's always about one image and the whole work is, uh, of course I do series but it's more just a way to in invite the people to understand a little more what's happening with the images. So I, I give title but it's more like an indication. It's, the whole work is one work for me. And, Eventually, it's all going to be, become one image. Mm -hmm. In my mind, there's something like this happening at the moment. And the process is very important in, uh, in your work. Mm -hmm. um, do you always uh, present a photograph as an end product, or do you sometimes also use performance and show the, perf the, the process to your audience? Um, well, this is a quite good question, because for me, the, the image it doesn't exist as one 
of course you sometimes have to stop it's a punctuation but the image from one context to the other can be totally different once it's going to be a print and next time it's going to be a video or I can act I, re I really like to replay with images and uh, I often like this image of the, the lemon that you're going to press many times until it's dry and when it's dry you just throw it away and take a new one and um, yeah, I have the feeling that at this moment um, a lot of uh, emerging uh, artists and photographers are working with uh, craftsmanship in uh, photography. Uh, there's also the, um, in the festival this exhibition, Craftsmanship in uh, mm -hmm. Photography. Um, like for example uh, Daisuka, uh, Yakota, mm -hmm. and uh, Jean-Vincent uh, Simonet. Uh, do you feel related to this group of mm -hmm. artists yeah. or um, are yeah. you on your own? No, no, I feel, I feel related, but it's more a surprise only to see work that you understand a bit where it comes from and I guess for all of us, the fact that we see so many images in a digital world makes that obviously at some point we need to go back to something that is physical, that is for the body, that is for not always the, the, the mind that makes the process, but just really to feel something with, with, your, with your body when you, when you are confronted to an image. And also, they both work quite, uh, it's also loud work, it's big, you have to impose yourself if you do a little format. You, the chances are people are not going, even going to see what you do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you always work alone, or do you always, uh, do you sometimes also work uh, in a group? Yeah. Um, well, uh, for pictures, more alone. But then with video, I like to work in collectives, and uh, for books, then obviously I'm, I'm going to be working with people, <laughs> like Delphine Bedel that you have here, who was a, a big supporter. And, Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, thank thank you very you. much. Uh, Daniela Hi. Uh, van Ark, welcome. Uh, we know each other quite well because we worked together on a very nice exhibition in Museum van Loon here in, uh, in Amsterdam, an old family house which is very richly decorated. Um, and um, there you made an exhibition um, that was playing with um, yeah, mechanisms of art, in art and that's really a theme in, in your work and I have the feeling that that is also the theme in a way of your most recent uh, series. Uh, we can give an overview and then go back to the first image. Um, what is it? Is it auction? It has something to do with auction, or what do what? Yeah. What are we looking at? Yeah, it's maybe uh, interesting to explain the process and what you're looking at because it's maybe if you're it's very insider work. If you don't know, if you've never seen a catalog, you don't know what you're looking at probably. Uh, but it's a page from an art house auction, an auction house um, catalog that I ripped out. And I photographed it in front of a light box with a 4x5 inch camera. So it's an analog image that you're looking at. Um, but it feels like you're looking at a photoshopped image. But it, it just exposed all the image um, or all the information that's on that page. So the artwork, the value, the provenance. Um, it's a bit banal. It's very, uh, yeah, an exposed work. Do you look at the art world? like that, like a bit banal? Um, no, no, I think I'm looking at it where my position in this whole world is. And I think that's also where this uh, work is coming from. Because I'm taking quite expensive work and quite famous uh, artists work and I reproduce it in my own work. And I make a whole new image that is not their image anymore. So it's my image now. Um, what was the question? I don't know. <laughs> but it's a good answer yeah. anyway. Um, um, in the past, um, you had an exhibition in foam and then you was like a real photographer. And um, now you're more uh, working in the field of visual art. So you, um, you work also with uh, sculpture and um, drawing. Yeah. Um, 
why why had you why did you have the feeling that you want to explore other fields why was photography not enough anymore for yeah. you um, well, I studied photography, I graduated in 2005 and um, I'm very from an analog school still and I think within the years it's, uh, I always worked very slowly on, on series and I think the whole medium catched up with me, it went too fast, there was too much, everybody who got laid off in recession was going to study photography and turned into a photographer and this whole red race of photography, I, I felt a bit, um, yeah, I, I just didn't like it anymore. I didn't like to look at images, uh, you know, the, the phones with the cameras on it. And, and I started questioning myself, like why in the first place did I study photography? And I think that was because I couldn't draw. And then I was like, okay, I can't draw, I study photography. And um, I think within a couple of years, once I, I dared to make the step of also within my the range of my interest make uh, 3D work, um, yeah, it really excited me. Not only have to work with a camera anymore and with a subject and permissions and all this stuff, you know, and just sitting in a in a studio and make stuff that really excited me. But now after some years. The You're media is coming back and I think this is sort of a circle around because I'm yeah, part more of the art world now than of the photography world, I think. So I use the art world in my photography now and uh, sort of, yeah, it's really about my, I think this world is really about my place in, in this whole um, universe. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you both. Thank you. Uh, to you for your uh, attention and uh, I would like to invite you for tomorrow because then we have another round of premiere talks. Thank you very much.